the man said. If the man be a bachelor, sir, I can. But if he be a married man, then it's his wife's head. And I can never cut off a woman's head. <laughs> Come, sir. Leave me your snatches and yield me a direct answer. Tomorrow morning, Arthur died, Claudia and Barnardine. Here in our prison is a common executioner who in his office lacks a helper. If you shall take it on yourself to assist him, he shall redeem you from your jives. If not, you shall have your full time of imprisonment and your deliverance with an unpitied whipping, for you have been a notorious board. Sir, I have been an unlawful board, time out of mind. But yet I'd be content to be a lawful hangman. I'd be glad to receive some instruction from my fellow partner. Watch out, Borson! Where's the Borson there? Do you call, sir? Sirrah, this man is to assist you tomorrow in your execution. He cannot plead his estimation with you, for he has been a board. A board, sir? Fire upon him! He will discredit our mystery. Go to, sir. You both weigh equally. A feather will turn the scale. <laughs> Come on, board. I will instruct thee in my trade. Follow. Call him a Barnardine and Claudio. Look. Here is the warrant for thy death, Claudio. It is now dead midnight. By eight tomorrow, thou must be made immortal. Where's Barnardine? As fast locked up in sleep as guiltless labour when it lies starkly in the traveller's bones. He will not wake. Who could do good on him? Well, go, prepare yourself. A heart, what noise? Heaven give thy spirits comfort. By and by, I do hope it's some reprieve or pardon for the most gentle Claudio. Welcome, Father. The best and most wholesome spirit of the night envelop you, good brothers. Who came here of late? None since the curfew run. Not Isabel? No. They will then, ere be long. What comfort is for Claudio? There is some in hope. It is a bitter deputy. Not so. Not so. His life is paralleled even with the strokes and lines of his great justice. He doth with holy abstinence, subdues that in himself which spurns on his powers to qualify in others. Where he kneeled with that which he corrected, where he tyrannous. This being so, he is just. Now they are come. This is a gentle promise. Seldom when the steel jailer is a friend of man. How now, what noise? That spirit possesses such haste that wounds the insisting Boston with her strokes. There must he stay until the officer arrives to let him in. He's called up. Have you no countermand for Claudia yet, but he must die tomorrow? None, sir, none. As near dawning as it is, you shall hear more help. Happily! Do something no? Yet I believe there comes no countermand. No example have we. Besides, upon the very siege of justice, Lord Andrew to the public ear hath professed the contrary. This is Lordship's man. Here comes Claudio's pardon. My lord has sent you this note by me, his further charge, and she spoke not by the smallest article of it. Neither in time, matter, or other circumstances. Tomorrow, as it is almost day. I shall obey him. This is his pardon. Purchased by such sin for which the pardoner himself is in. <laughs> Hence, offence has quick celerity when it's bored in high authority. When vice makes mercy, mercy so extended that through the false love is the offender befriended. Now, sir, what news? I told you. Lord Angelo, that I think me remiss in mine office, awakes me with this 
unwanting putting on. It seems strangely, for he hath not used it before. Pray, let's hear it. Whatsoever you may hear to the contrary, let Claudio be executed by four of the clock, and in the afternoon, Barnardine. For my better satisfaction, let me have Claudio's head sent me by five. Let this be duly performed with the thought that more depends on this than we must yet deliver. Thus fail not to do your office, and you will answer this at your peril. What say to this, sir? What's this Barnardine who is to be executed in the afternoon? Uh, one that was a prisoner nine years. How came it that the absent duke had not either delivered him to his liberty or executed him? I have heard he was ever meant to do so. His friends still wrought for peace for him. And in fact, that despite all now, in the government of Lord Angelo came not to know doubtful proof. Is it now apparent? Most manifest and not denied by himself. Has he borne himself penitently in prison? How seems he to be touched? A man that apprehends death no more dreadfully than a drunken sleep, careless, reckless, fearless of what's past, present and yet to come, insensible of mortality and desperately mortal. He wants advice. He will hear none. He hath evermore had the liberty of prison. Give him leave to escape, he will not. He is drunk many times a day, if not many days entirely drunk. We have very often waked him as if to carry him to execution and showed him seeming warrant to do so, not move them at all. More of him anon. There is, Provost, in your brow, honesty and constancy. If I read it not truly, my ancient skills beguile me. But in the boldness of my cunning, I lay myself in hazard. Claudio, who him you have a moral to execute, is no greater forfeiter of the law than Angelo who sentenced me. To make you understand this in manifest effect, I crave but four days of respite for the which you do me both present and dangerous courtesy. I pray so much. In the delaying of death. <coughs> Alack, how may I do it? With the hour limited and express <coughs> command under penalty to have his head delivered in a view of Angelo. I will make my case as Claudius to cross this in the fullness. By the vow of my orders, I warrant you, if my instructions may be your guide, let this Barnardine be executed in the morning and his head borne to Angelo. He hath seen them both, he will discover the favour. Death is a great disguiser. And you can add to this shave his head, tie up his beard, say it was the penitent desire to be so burned out. You know this course is common. If anything falls for you upon this, other than thanks and good fortune, by the saint I profess, I will appeal against it with my life. Good father, this is against my oath. Were you sworn to the duke or his deputy? To him and his substitutes. You will think you have made no offence if the duke avouched to the justice of your deed. But what likelihood is that? No resemblance, but certainty. Yet, since I see you fearful that neither my code integrity nor persuasion can with ease attempt you, I will go further than I meant to pluck all fear out of you. Look you, here's the hand and the seal of the Duke. The character you know I doubt not, and the signet is not strange to you. I know them both. The contents of this is the return of the Duke. <coughs> you will anon overread it at your pleasure, where you will find that in two days he will be here. This is a thing not known to Angelo, who this very day receives letters of strange tenor, perchance of the Duke's death, perchance of the Duke entering some monastery, by chance Nothing of what is writ. <coughs> Look, the unfolding stars call up the shepherd. Put not yourself in amazement how things should be. All difficulties are but easy when they are known. Call your executioner and off with Barnardine's head. 
I will give him a present shrift and advise him to a better place. Yet, you are amazed. But this shall absolutely resolve you. Come away, it's almost over.